when a fluid is flowing through a closed channel, such as a pipe or between two flat plates, either of two types of flow may occur. Laminar flow or turbulent flow. Laminar flow tends to occur at lower velocities, below a threshold at which it becomes turbulent. In non-scientific terms, laminar flow is smooth, while turbulent flow is rough. In fluid dynamics, laminar flow, or sometimes called a streamlined flow, occurs when a type of fluid flows smoothly in parallel layers, with no disruption between the layers. In laminar flow, the velocity, pressure and other flow properties at each point in the fluid remain constant. At low velocities, the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing and adjacent layers slide past one another like playing cards. There are no cross currents perpendicular to the direction of flow and the motion of the particles of the fluid is very orderly, moving in straight lines parallel to that surface. Laminar flow is common only in cases in which the flow channel is relatively small. The fluid is moving slowly and its viscosity is relatively high. Most other kinds of fluids flow are turbulent. Turbulence or turbulent flow is a less orderly flow regime characterized by chaotic changes in pressure and flow velocity. It is in contrast to laminar flow regime. Turbulence is commonly observed in everyday phenomena, such as surf, fast-flowing rivers, or smoke from a chimney, and most fluid flows occurring in nature and created in engineering applications are turbulent. Turbulence is caused by excessive kinetic energy in parts of a fluid flow, which overcomes the damping effect of fluid's viscosity. For this reason, turbulence is easier to create in low-viscosity fluids, but more difficult in highly viscous fluids. In general terms, in turbulent flow, unsteady vortices appear of many sizes which interact with each other, consequently drag, due to friction effects increases. This would increase the energy needed to pump fluid through an orifice, for instance. The appearance of turbulence can be predicted by a dimensionless constant called the Reynolds number, which calculates the balance between kinetic energy and viscose damping in a fluid flow. At low Reynolds numbers, flow tends to be dominated by laminar flow, but at high Reynolds numbers, turbulence results from differences in the fluid speed and direction, which may sometimes intersect or even move, counter to the overall direction of the flow. In boundary layer flow over a flat plate, experiments confirm that after a certain length of flow, the laminar boundary layer will become unstable and turbulent. This instability occurs across different scales and with different fluids. For flow in a pipe of diameter D, experimental observations show that for fully developed laminar flow occurs when Reynolds number is under 2300 and turbulent flow occurs when Reynolds number is over 10,000. These transition Reynolds numbers are also called critical Reynolds numbers and they are different for every geometry. These eddy currents began to churn the flow, using up energy in the process, and for liquids, increasing the chances of cavitation. Reynolds number has wide applications, ranging from liquid flow in a pipe to the passage of air over an aircraft wing. It is used to predict the transition from laminar to turbulent flow, and used in the scaling of similar but different sized flow situations, such as between an aircraft model and a wind tunnel, and the full-size version. Vortices and eddies are an important part of turbulent flow. They are special forms where turbulent flow can develop. Not all turbulent flows are consisting of eddies and vortices. Eddies are swirling flows where it creates a hole or low pressure area in the middle of eddy. This form of turbulent flow is rather unstable and chaotic. Eddies are created usually when there is an obstacle in the streamlined path, like uh, cylindrical bodies. The body reduces the flow velocity near the wall until it creates backward velocity near wall region. Other flow streamlines continue forward moving, which creates rotating movements like here. Vortices are also frequent forms of turbulent flow. 
Vortex is also a swirling or rotating flow, but it rotates around an axis along the moving direction. Compared to eddies, vortices are more structural and have higher energy. But on the other hand, they are difficult to produce intentionally and they can vanish quickly. One of the most important areas where vortices are examined is aviation. Vortices are created when airplane is flying in the air. In aviation, these are rather unwanted because they create extra drag. Airplane wing has high pressure area under its wing and low pressure area on the wing. Air wants to move from high pressure area to lower pressure area. Therefore, air tries to escape over the wing tip onto the wing. This way it forms a curving flow which hits the wing surface, producing additional drag and reducing wings efficient leaf power. The result is less efficient fuel usage. The solution is upward curved winglets. This way the escaping air has much longer bat onto the wing and the heating point area is also reduced. The result is increased efficiency of the airplane. But vortices are not always unwanted things. A couple examples are in cooling systems and racing car aerodynamics design. In cooling system, we usually look for little turbulent flow or vortices. Turbulent flow increases heat transfer coefficient. Of course, the drawback is increased system back pressure because resistance is increased when the flow enters into turbulent zone. But it is justified from cooling point of view. Second place where vortices are generated purposely is aerodynamics in racing. Because vortex has higher energy, it can be used as shields for other flow areas where we don't want to let dirty flow to disturb us. Usually they don't want to let high pressure air to go under the car. Or on contrary, because there is the same air escaping engineers can create extra downforce from it. When air escapes from top of the wing to under the wing, it increases the airspeed there. Increased airspeed creates lower pressure under the wing. This means more downforce from the high pressure on top of the wing. This was a quick view of turbulent and laminar flow and where we can use them.